Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I want to talk about so-called common modulus attack on RSA. Uh, this was something invented back in 1980s. Uh, what it means is that, uh, let's say you have Alice, user A, Bob and Charlie. Um, look at the public key of Bob and Charlie. Bob has NE1, Charlie has NE2. Um, what is E1 and what is E2? E1 is connected with D1. D1 is the private key of Bob. Um, for decryption and uh, uh, e2, e2 and d2 are connected also of course d2 is the private decryption for charlie okay this is the basic rsa that we have been talking about uh, only difference now is that two different users have the same public modulus you know n and n are here okay how is n generated maybe n was generated by a central authority um he or she would have picked two random numbers, P and Q, prime numbers, um, and multiplied them and uh, generated E1 um, and E2. Um, Bob and Charlie are not computing D1 because they don't know how to compute by FN, okay? Um, without knowing the prime factors of N, at this point, it seems like we can't compute by FN. Anyway, so the, the central authority is the one that is generating N, E1, D1, N, E2, D2 and it is giving to both Bob and Charlie the public keys NE1, NE2. Now anyone can send a message to both Bob and Charlie, okay? So what is wrong with this system? Why is this vulnerable? So that's what I want to talk about today. Given um, um, NE1 and D1, remember Bob needs, Bob needs D1, otherwise he can't decrypt any message. So he knows N, he knows E1 and D1. Alice will just use the public component N and E1 to send a message to Bob. Bob will use um, his D1. Similarly, Charlie will use D2 um, for all messages that are encrypted using N comma E2 public pair. So why is this vulnerable? Can Bob attack Charlie and Charlie attack Bob? Okay. It, it turned out that is possible. Okay. Um, I will explain an algorithm now. The algorithm, um, basically looks at the mathematical relationship carefully. Uh, the, the equation number one, given a public exponent and a private exponent connected by this mathematical relationship. Um, so you know E and you know D, you don't know pi of N, but we, we can actually find the factors of N. That's amazing. So given E, D, you know, can you find the factors P or Q? Okay, that's basically the question. It turned out that you can find the factors P or Q. So the algorithm will work as follows. Um, it randomly picks an element and looks for um, an interesting sequence. Okay, and I will explain the high level idea first. What is the meaning of the equation number one? E times D is congruent to one mod pi of N means pi of n divides e times t minus one, right? That comes straight from the definition of modulus, okay? So equation one implies uh, pi of n divides e times d minus one, okay? Let me call e times d minus one as k, okay? Let k be e times d minus one. Remember, both Bob and Charlie would be able to apply this because they know the corresponding e1, d1s, okay? So I'm going to use the equation number one as a general equation rather than E1, D1, E2, e, D2. Anyway, so pi of n divides k, all right? That's because of the definition of modulus, okay? Now, if pi of n divides k, we also proved a theorem earlier that if you take any group element x from z star n, uh, what can you say about x power k? x power k is also equal to one in mod n, okay? That's something we already proved because k is a multiple of pi of n. That's the reason why we say pi of n divides k. That means xk is equal to one in mod n, all right? So this is going to help us now. What we are going to do, we just take the k. k is easy to compute by both Bob and Charlie because they have the e1 and d1. Okay, k is nothing but now, what if I rewrite k as follows? I write rewrite k as some two power r times u. You have to notice that k is an even number because pi of n is an even number. Okay, we talked about pi of n earlier, so recall that. Since k is an even number, um, r 
must be greater than or equal to one. Okay, it cannot be zero. If it is zero, you will be um, u has to be odd, which is not possible because we are writing k as the uh, power of two, two times u. If u is r, even we would have increased the the value of r by making it plus more one, for example. Okay, so u has to be odd. So now we have the structure of k. Now let's think about how to generate this this uh, interesting sequence and uh, to factor uh, n from e and d. So let's pick a random number here, x, okay, and consider the sequence x power uh, u, x power two u, x power two square u, and so on will end with one because x power k is 1. So this is going to be 1. You have a sequence of numbers. What if uh, one of the numbers is 1 and the previous number is not 1 or minus 1? Then you are done. You are done because we talked about this also earlier. Um, suppose let's say uh, this is number y. Okay, Let's call this y. And what is the next term? Next term is y square. What is, what is y square? If y square is uh, congruent to 1 mod uh, um, n and the y is not equal to plus or minus one then we already proved another theorem that computing the gcd of n n with y plus one or y minus one will solve the problem so if i take y is say some element not equal to um, plus or minus one right this y is not plus or minus one then and if you find the next element turned out to be one like this, then all you have to do is just compute GCD of um, y minus one with n or GCD of y plus one with n. We, we talked about that earlier. So this is basically the idea of how to factor n given e and d. Okay, that's the randomized algorithm. We randomly pick an x and look at this, this nice sequence. All right, I will quickly now show you a demo. So I have this uh, factor from d demo, which is uh, for simplicity, I'm only going to generate a 512 bit um, RSA modulus, and I will show you that it is able to factor easily. This was a random number n, okay, made of two primes p and q. We don't know them, but we do know e and d. The question is, can we find n from e and d? The, and the answer is yes. It was able to find a factor, and we can check this factor is correct. Let's call this factor to be p. So you see zero. That means you found the factor p of n. Okay, so. This is very nice. From n, e, and d, you can find the prime factors. All right. What it means is that let's go back to the whiteboard. What it means is that this setup is dangerous, meaning a central authority generates generating two primes p and q, computing the public and private exponents, and uh, reusing the same modulus e n um, is not a good idea because we just shown a demo that all we have to do is randomly pick a group element x and compute this sequence x power u, x power 2 u and all the way until x power 2 power or u. And look whether can you find uh, two elements, adjacent elements, where one element is a square of the previous element, right? Such that y square equal to one mod n. Then all I did is basically gcd of y plus one comma n, or you can put, if you don't like plus, you can put minus as well. Okay, this is enough. This is going to give us the prime factors. One of the prime factor will come out and then other factor is easy. Okay, just divide n by that factor. So recall that this is a probabilistic algorithm or randomized algorithm. We randomly pick an x and look at this sequence and uh, we are looking for two adjacent elements where one element is not equal to plus or minus one. The next element is equal to one. You can actually generalize it. It need not be one. It can be any square number. We also talked about it earlier, um, but I will leave that as an exercise for you. Okay, our perfect square. Okay, so uh, that's basically it. Thank you very much.